Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in this week to This Georgia Clay. So in this week's vlog, we have another amazing DIY. Um, we are still in our owner suite, and so we're making the final adjustments to our room, making sure that everything comes to life with our vision that we wanted for the space. And so we decided to build a fireplace. As you know, if you've been watching our vlog series for you know from the beginning to now, that we have a shiplap fireplace in our living room. And I really wanted to paint it black, but Matt was like, not having it. So I finally got my black fireplace, guys, and it looks so stunning. It really is beautiful in this space, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So let's get into the walk. So when we got home, it was time to clean up. So I'm still working on that tree. It's a work in progress, um, but we needed to get everything out of the way so we can start the framing process for the fireplace. So we're just doing that now. Alright guys, so you just saw us put up our dimensions for our fireplace. The original plan for the fireplace was to have a 60 inch fireplace. Our fireplace insert is 50 inches and I figured that having 10 inches on both sides would be good symmetry for the focal point in our room. However, we ran into a snag because at 60 inches it runs directly into this electrical outlet and we need that to be able to plug up um, the fireplace insert because it is an electric fireplace. So in order to combat that, Matt decided to go ahead and make it 66 inches. So that way we have three inch clearance on both sides and we don't have to worry about having this exposed. It'll just be behind the fireplace. We can plug right into it and it'll be good to go. And then also if we need to, we can take the insert out to access the plug if anything should happen with the fireplace. So let's go ahead and get at it. So since our studs weren't centered to the room and we wanted the fireplace to be as centered as possible, Matt decided to use some 1x8 boards to create our studs that we would build the fireplace off of. And open my heart like you're fearless Steal all the gold you can get, you can get Show me your love, leave me breathless, breathless Like 
So now that we have our support centered to the wall, it was time to frame it out, starting with our side supports. Show me so we knew we wanted our fireplace to be 12 inches in depth, so we made sure that we cut everything that we needed to create that effect accordingly. we partner with Touchstone Home Products. They were nice enough to send us over this sideline 50 inch recess fireplace. Um, it is an electric fireplace, so it's perfect in our space. We don't have to worry about any gas or connecting any gas lines or anything like that. We just plug it up. Um, the reason why I chose this one is because they offer realistic looking fireplaces. The flames are realistic looking. They set the real nice mood, coziness, vibe that I was going for in our room. And so I wanted to make sure that we put a fireplace in so that way we can have it just nice and cozy all year uh, round. So now we reach the part where we need to go ahead and measure the space with the fireplace. So we have to go ahead and take it out. And then we're gonna go ahead and do like a dry fit to see exactly where we want the fireplace to sit. So that way when you're laying in the bed or sitting in the bed, it's at a nice viewing point. Um, I didn't wanna have it too low down to the ground where you know, I have to sit on the edge of the bed to actually see the fireplace. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and get back into it. So now it was time to frame out the fireplace insert. So I knew that I wanted to be able to see the fireplace either if I was laying in the bed or sitting up. So we used my counter height bar stool, which is 24 inches and actually came out to be the perfect height. So yes guys, look, we got a Craig jig. I'm so excited and actually it's pretty fun to make those pocket holes. So we finally got one. I know that a lot of you um, have said in our other projects that it would have been easier had we had a Craig jig to make certain things. So we finally have one. We're getting super professional, rounding out those uh, tools that we have in the garage and we're getting a lot of them so we need to create some more space for it. But it was most definitely um, a great tool to utilize in this project. But I need you, and you're off my radar now. I've lost you. Telling you that I need you, but you're off my radar now. Found myself in between the lines, underneath your bed sheets. It's 
started fun But now I'm into deep into this flow A zero sum game that I will lose There's no sipping past it Every time you walk away from me I want you How could I want you more? Oh, when did I lose my perspective? Oh God, have I lost it? But my cravings for you so shameless Can't get enough I've lost you All right, so it's finally starting to look like something, guys. I was a little, um, I guess, impatient, and I was asking Matt, like, when is it gonna look like a fireplace? <laughs> and so finally, I can see that it actually was starting to take shape. Um, so now he's just finishing out the fireplace around, and then we'll start um, putting in the structure in the interior portion of the, of the fireplace. But with this project, you use a lot of screws, and I've always seen like those bucket of screws at Home Depot, and I've seen people with them, I'm like, why would they need all those screws? Well, now we know, because this was a lot of screws that needed to take place to build this frame. Just in case you guys are curious, we used three and a half inch screws on the main support and two and a half inch screws everywhere else, including the pocket uh, screws. So now that we have the fireplace um, mounted, it was time to test it out and make sure that everything was working properly and we didn't destroy it in the process of um, framing it out. So now it was time for paint. So we decided to use shiplap on our fireplace and I wanted black so we actually this is the first time that we used a paint sprayer so this is the Wagner uh, Flexio 3500 and um, this is actually something that we were provided by Wagner for a future collaboration and that's coming up soon I can't wait to share that with you guys but as you can see we were going through a lot of paint really quick so we wanted to get our hands on it and just you know test it out before we actually apply the same method for another project that we're working on for our backyard series that will start next month. Um, so I think we've got the hang of it, so next time we'll be able to save a little bit more paint. You know 
I want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Hey guys, so this is the part that I was dreading the most during the process. So um, I was worried that, you know, I had to make a bunch of cuts and I uh, wasn't going to be able to get it nice and flush around the fireplace, but it ended ended up working out pretty good. Um, so you'll see that uh, I used the glass for the front of the fireplace a few times um, during this video because I, I always like to dry fit everything, make sure it fits right, um, just in case I need to make any adjustments, because the last thing you wanna do is try to, you know, cut a chip lap or trim around something and then have to take it off and adjust it later. So what you see me doing right here is um, I pushed the fireplace out a little bit, because um, I needed it to, uh, I needed enough space for the chip lap to be all around the fireplace and still allow enough space for the glass to slide on uh, into the, the little grooves that, that are built in. Um, to make sure that it, you know, it was seated correctly. So yeah, it worked out pretty good. So this part here, I'm actually using a pencil to, to mark each side of the fireplace that I need to cut. I started the cut on each end with the jigsaw and thought about using the jigsaw for the whole way across, but I actually ended up using a, a circular saw that Heart Tools sent us uh, in another partnership. So it kind of worked out a, a lot better for a cleaner look and uh, it was a lot faster and easier than, than trying to use the jigsaw for the whole thing. So while I figured that out, Brittany helped me out a lot by screwing two pocket holes on each end of the two by fours that I was using for the, the studs that the TV mount would sit on. Um, so that just made it a lot easier. Um, you know, we kind of tag team that part of the process. And then um, I spaced out the studs exactly where I needed them for the TV mount. Um, and you'll see it, it looks kind of weird. Um, so I have four studs in total. The two in the middle are specifically for the, the TV mount. And the two on the outside, I flipped the other way, so the the, the wide way of the board, um, just to give a little more space for the, the shiplap to bite on when I nailed it. So there was no you know particular reason for that. I just wanted a little bit more surface area for the, the nails to grab onto for the shiplap. And that was pretty much it. But um, yeah, you'll see the rest of the process here. I fell down the bottom. So I fell down way deep But if I can't have the real you Then let me make a 3D print Of you You Of you Of you Of you And here's that board that I notched out earlier So it, it was a pretty good fit I liked how it came out um, And then the glass will cover up all the edges On the outside that you see um, so yeah, it'll give it a nice clean polished look, but you know, it's time for dinner. So I had to stop. Uh, luckily, Brittany cooked a delicious taco salad. So I went ahead and scarfed that down and went back to work. So you faded out while I watched it down, obsessed with myself. Wanna hit the reverse on what's broken. Can we be strangers against our friends like a moan? So bad about that. So why won't you follow? Why won't you follow me home? 
I know I can't make you mine, yes I ran out of time, there's no hope for me I fell down the bottom, so I fell down way deep But if I can't have the real you, then let me make a 3D print of you So believe it or not guys, uh, I didn't have a lot of this pre-planned out, uh, kind of just did everything on the fly and figured it out as I went. Um, so the mantle, I, I knew that it needed 8 inches of clearance, so I put the support 2x4 uh, about 10 inches above the, the top of the fireplace. And then for the TV mount, I actually found that on Amazon for 30 bucks, like, and it holds up to I think a 70 inch TV. So that's pretty good, because usually mounts are like 100 bucks a piece. Um, and I'll link that below, but it's it's super sturdy. Um, we, they had, came with four huge bolts that go into the studs. So luckily I knew exactly where my studs were because I put them in. So it made the process a little bit easier, um, but I you know, kind of eyeballed it, lined it up where I needed it to be, and whew, look at that level, that's nice. But yeah, I uh, got everything in there and, and Brittany helped me out. And uh, we are almost done, guys. Uh, it's, almost, it's almost there. Flex. Flex. Right. <laughs> Something like this. I did. Huh? I did. To the side. Of <laughs> you. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my so if you guys have been watching, uh, you know that we built a floating shelf in the laundry room and it was just a pretty much a regular box, nothing special, no miters or anything. So I wanted to kind of challenge myself a little bit and try to uh, make a um, basically a mitered box mantle um, so that the edges were a little bit tighter. So, but I wanted to show you guys something real quick because what I should have done, um, I usually check every board that I buy. So when you look at the face of this board, you can see it's a little twisted, a little warped, and that it will show like a little bit at the, at the end of everything, but hey, I gotta work with it. But you know, if you see the, at the sides, it's pretty good. And the other edge is also pretty straight, but I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I didn't look at the, the face of the board. And then if you look at this other board, it's way better. So, you know, it's something to keep in mind if you guys are at, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever uh, project you're doing, uh, make sure you check, you know, not just the, the size, but also the face of the board. Make sure it's as straight as you can get it because uh, it, it, you know, makes the overall project a lot better in the end. You can say I lost my mind. I will keep on holding So I tried to take the, the straightest board and I mitered all the edges. Um, with the long sides, I use a table saw and then the shorter sides, I use the, the miter saw to uh, trim everything to a 45 degree angle on all the edges um and then took them back outside and then taped the the top edges with uh just some painters tape just to get everything lined up as straight as i can get it and then with uh fingers crossed and hopefully it works out by the time you turn it over and glue uh, put some glue down you should be able to just fold everything up and it'll line up perfectly together
So I learned a new word. This process right here is, is called uh, chamfer, like to chamfer the edges. Um, basically you can take it like a screwdriver or anything with like a smooth flat edge and just kind of scrape it across to it. And what it does is it kind of seals up the edges a little bit tighter. Um, that way you have to use a little bit less wood filler um, and then it just gives a, a nice look overall. So you don't see a lot of edges and seams and gaps. As we fine tune all the final pieces and make sure that everything's perfectly aligned and looking good, are you guys ready for the before and after? comments what you guys think of our beautiful fireplace i'm so in love with it like it just it's a statement um feature in the room now and I, I just i can't imagine our room without it um again for our room i wanted it to have you know farmhouse nods but i still wanted it to be more modern in our bedroom but also sexy romantic just a place where me and matt can come and relax and spend most of our time um, so I wanted to add a fireplace in. I just didn't want a fireplace. Like I could have easily bought one of those fireplaces that have like the cabinet for the TV stand in it. And we had that before in our previous um, like apartments and stuff like that. And I just felt like for our home, we needed to step out of our comfort zone and do an actual structure. And we've done a lot of DIYs where, you know, we've added wall treatment and things like that, but nothing as far as building actual structure to house something. So I think Matt, knocked it out of the park with this one and it's absolutely gorgeous and he didn't give me pushback on painting it black so i love that too because i got what i wanted as well um so again let me know in the comments what you guys think i absolutely think it's beautiful i just wanted to recap on the fireplace um so again the fireplace was provided to us by touchstone home products and thank you guys so much for sending it over to us we absolutely love it and um, with the fireplace, I wanted to point out that you can get it where it just has the wood feature behind it with the flames. The flames do adjust, so you can change the color. And I just like to have it on the um, red flames. I just feel like they're more natural looking and you can change the flame intensity as well. It also comes with like, these rocks here, but I feel like they would just make it more of a glam look. And for me personally, I just don't prefer to have them in there, but they do come with them. So that is something that you guys can add in yours too. Um, let me see if I can change the color. I haven't really used it yet. So you have blue here. You could change it to a mix of the orange and blue. You can change it just to the uh, red and orange flame, which I prefer. And then you also can change, um, you can put on heat as well. So it does provide heat. Actually, oh, I feel it, it feels so nice. Um, so it does provide heat as well, so I don't necessarily have to turn on the heat for the whole house. If we're just cold in our room, I don't have to heat the kids' rooms as well. So I do like that as well, it's a nice feature. You can turn that off, turn it on, you can just have the flames by itself, and it's all remote control. So we'll see who we fight to see who gets it on their side of the bed. So we have a lot of things coming. Um, oh, and also in our mantle. With the mantle, a lot of people were probably gonna think that I would have chosen the same stain that's in our built-in but I just wanted to have something a little bit more just different in our bedroom and add some more color tones to our house so we did go with a um, we put a weather oak stain on top of the pine and then we also added um, transit gray and they're all from what is it called babe? Minwax? Uh, is it beer thing? No, Minwax. 
Then what? Well, link it below. Um, but yeah, so we added that stain on here and I think it came out really nice. It, it gives me more of a whitewash color um, than the gray and I made sure to do it very light because that gray stain is um, thick, kind of like a paint. So we'll link the stain below um, because right now we can't think of it on the top of our heads. But it gave out like uh, the complete look came off as a whitewash finish and I really like it. I think it's a good contrast between the dark shiplap. So it gives it a little stands out. So on top of here, I don't know what I'm going to decorate this as of yet. We have, I'm um, gonna get a purchase a TV and so the TV will be coming probably this week or next week. Our bid comes on Tuesday. I went to a local store called Woodstock Furniture. You'll see that next um, week's vlog of me shopping to find our bid. We also got some nightstands. They're actually cabinets that we purchased from Target and I absolutely love them. I can't wait to show them to you guys, but we're gonna use them as nightstands. So they should be here on Tuesday as well. We have a lot of artwork that will go in this room. We have some pictures. I mean, just everything's gonna come together. I still need to find a um, light fixture for our room because we did pay to have a ceiling fan mount there. They could either put a ceiling fan or you could put a chandelier or anything. So I do want a chandelier. I just haven't found an exact one as of yet. In this space, I'm still building out our tree. Um, so that'll come. And I already ordered our shutters and they come in about the next five weeks or so. So all of this will be taken out. It's messy in our room as of right now. We have things everywhere. I feel like our home is a constant construction zone, but it's coming to a completion pretty soon and we can actually enjoy the space. So again, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week to this Georgia Clay. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, share it with a friend, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.